You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday 27th of February and I'm Brendan from Milford Asset Management. Last week it was again evident that good news is bad news, with a myriad of data prints pointing to a more resilient US economy, implying a greater need for more tightening from the Fed. Firstly, we got flash PMIs earlier in the week, which showed US business activity unexpectedly rebounded in February, reaching the highest level in eight months. The composite increased back into expansionary territory at 50.2 from 46.8 in January, and ahead of consensus at 47.5. The services PMI increased to 50.5 from 46.8, signaling the first expansion since June last year, while the manufacturing PMI printed at 47.8, a tick up from January, but still in contractionary territory below 50. We also got a read on the state of the consumer via the personal income and spending report, which added to the good news is bad news rhetoric. Personal spending increased 1.8% month on month versus expectations of 1.4%, outlining a robust consumer, albeit there may be some seasonal factors involved. Later in the week, we got another read on inflation via the Personal Consumption Expenditure Index, the Fed's favoured measure of inflation. This printed hotter than expected, with headline PCE inflation rising 5.4% year-on-year versus expectations of 5%. The implications of rebounding business activity, a robust consumer, and strong inflation is a more hawkish Fed, hence rates markets sold off toward the back end of the week, sending yields higher and equities lower. The yield on the 10-year US Treasury note finished the week at 3.94%, while the S&P 500 closed at 39.70, below the key 50-day moving average at 39.80. Elsewhere on the economic front, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand met last week in a much-anticipated meeting, given the market came into it less confident in the outcome as a result of Cyclone Gabrielle impacts. In the end, the outcome was fairly straightforward, a 50 basis point hike in the official cash rate to 4.75%, and guidance that the existing OCR track was still how the RBNZ expect rates to evolve. This implies that the RBNZ expect a peak of 5.5%, hence market pricing moved back up to meet this guidance. We also got Australian wage data, which came in a touch softer than expected at 0.8% quarter on quarter versus consensus at 1%. Despite slowing from the September quarter, the print was the highest for any December quarter in the last 10 years and as such has resulted in the highest annual growth in hourly wages since December 2012. This data is key for the path of Australian interest rates, so we will be watching how this evolves over coming months. In equity news, reporting season in both Australia and New Zealand kept us busy last week. Qantas reported first half profit before tax of $1.428 billion, just below top end of their guidance and slightly above consensus. The strong result was driven via revenue growth across all divisions, but it was the domestic and loyalty divisions that were strongest. No dividend was declared, but Qantas increased their buyback by $500 million, taking the total FY23 buyback to $900 million. Woolworths reported a solid first half, with EBIT up 18% year-on-year, 5% ahead of consensus. Strong cost management also assisted the result, with Woolworths slowing investment in data, digital and loyalty. The outlook was constructive, with Woolworths outlining their expectation for New Zealand's second half EBIT to be above first half. Domino's Pizza was the worst performer in the ASX 200 last week, finishing down 25% after a 6% EBIT miss and poor outlook. Concerns already existed about the ability to pass on inflation, but the big negative was the outlook. Domino's noted second-half same-store sales growth is down 2.2% year-on-year, and they also removed profit guidance, raising further questions on earnings visibility. Origin Energy updated the market last week to advise that the consortium has submitted a revised conditional and non-binding proposal at a price of $8.90 per share. This was a positive outcome, given the revised bid is only 1.1% below the previous bid, and the stock traded up 12% on the back of this. In New Zealand equities, A2 Milk reported a mixed result, with headline revenue up 19%, but a change in product mix towards the lower margin China label product, away from the English label product. Management talked the market down from 20% EBITDA margins, which was taken poorly and resulted in the stock falling 7% on the day. Auckland Airport reported a solid result, outlining a faster than expected recovery. Revenue was 6% ahead of consensus, driven by higher packs as well as retail and property revenue. Positively, management lifted guidance for FY23 net profit after tax, to 125 to 145 million, from 100 to 130 million. Telecommunications business Spark reported a surprisingly weak result last week, driven by higher COGS and weakness in cloud. EBITDA was 10% below consensus, yet management retained guidance, implying they need an extremely strong second half to meet guidance. In the week ahead, the key data we will be watching is Australian GDP, 
China PMIs, and the ISM readings in the US for indicators on business activity. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again next week.